You are now listening to Chakras and Shotguns. Welcome to Chakras and Shotguns, the podcast that guides you on the journey of spiritual development and personal preparedness. I'm Mick, a certified life coach, energy healer, and retreat facilitator. And I'm Jen, a former lawyer, yoga teacher in training, and human design lover. So you've probably heard of the lunar calendar, or maybe you have an app that tells you about the significance of different moon cycles. But maybe you want to know more about the phases of the moon and why they're spiritually important. In today's episode, we're going to talk all about the moon and get into lunar phases, history, and spiritual significance. And we'll get into all of that in a moment. First, I want to talk about how I personally keep finding ways to add more chakras and shotguns merge into my life. I'm a hydroflask girly. I'm not one of the Stanley Cup girlies. I'm a hydroflask girly. And I left my hydroflask at my yoga studio. And when I went back to pick it up, I was nervous about drinking out of it, honestly. And so I asked Mick, I need something. I need like a sticker. Do we have a Shockers and Shotgun sticker? And he was like, yeah, girl, it's on the website. So I added that. It's gorgeous. It's big. You can decorate all kinds of things with it, including your water bottle. Also, we just added a crop top. You know, if you're trying to have your belly out this summer, if you've been working on your fitness or not, whatever. We're body positive here. And then if you're always cold like I am. The hoodie and the crew sweatshirt, top notch, high quality, very soft. I wear it all the time. I'm wearing mine now. All of that to say, go to the website, chakrasandshotguns.com or on our Instagram at chakrasandshotguns and get you some merch. All right. Thank you for that, Jen. Let's jump into some breath work. So Mick has assigned me the breath work yet again. It's fine. It's because you're so good at it, boo. Okay. Thank you. I'll accept that. And yes, so it's April right now. And so we have a lot going on. We have been traveling. It's tax season. We have filed all of the extensions because we did not have our shit together on time, but that's fine. And so as we're juggling all of these things and we're, we're building and feeling pressure and worrying about the future and thinking about things that we should have done differently in the past, I have just had to be present because if I'm not present, I'm in yoga thinking about my to-do list and who I have to text and who I have to call. So we're going to be present in our breath work today. If you can find a comfortable seat or lay down, and let's get started. Before we start breathing together, let's ground ourselves, maybe put a hand on our belly and a hand on our heart. Another option to help you ground if you're seated, to put your hands on your knees face down. Just adding a little bit more grounding energy and weight to the seated breath work. Inhaling in through your nose, expanding your belly, inhaling up to your rib cage, finally your lungs, holding at the top. And let's sigh that breath out through your mouth. Let's do that again, inhaling in through your nose. Feeling yourself expand in all directions as you fill your belly, your rib cage, your chest with air. Holding at the top. And then sighing that breath out through your mouth. Last one together. Inhaling in through your nose. Feeling expansive. Feeling grounded. Grounded. 
And this breath, we're going to exhale out through your nose. Now breathe normally. Expressing gratitude for being aware of your breath coming into your body in this moment. Let's do a body scan. Starting from the tips of your toes. Just bringing awareness to your body. So you move up to your ankles, your lower legs, your thighs, up through your chakras, your root chakra at the base of your spine, your sacral chakra, your solar plexus at your rib cage your heart chakra at the middle of your chest, your throat chakra, your third eye, all the way up to your crown. Noticing where you're holding, where you're tense, Allowing yourself to feel gratitude for this moment in time where you're finding stillness and presence. As thoughts come up, as they are prone to do, noticing those thoughts, observing them unconcerned, And remembering that the practice of meditation is coming back to the breath, to yourself. It's not about preventing any thoughts from popping up. Allow yourself to sink a little deeper into your body. Maybe allowing a smile to form on your face, relieving any tension in your jaw, relaxing your tongue if it's on the roof of your mouth, and coming back to that feeling of gratitude. All right. Thanks so much for that, Jen. That was dope. Let's move on to the main topic now. So as we mentioned, we're talking all things moon and lunar. So first off, the moon has been significant for a super long time, thousands of years, right? Humans have been looking up at the sky and projecting their beliefs and thoughts about what the moon actually represents. There's actually a Wikipedia article that's titled List of Lunar Deities. And there are 117 deities just on that page. And I'm sure that doesn't cover every single civilization that <laughs> existed, right? But I think it just gives us a good idea of just how much we've thought about the moon as a species. Mm. Yeah, just to highlight a couple in ancient Egypt, Thoth, Isis, and Khonsu, shout out to Moon Knight <laughs> on Disney Plus, that is not a paid advertisement, were all associated with the moon. In Greek and Roman mythology, Artemis or Diana, Both were associated with the moon. And in Hinduism, Chandra is the god of the moon. I don't know about you, but I know a few Chandras out there in the day. So I didn't know that was a name that derived from from Hinduism. You know, that's very interesting, actually. This is an aside because (laughs) I feel like I learned that Dominique is traditionally a French name, like within the past five years. We know a whole lot of black Dominiques. It's a lot of black Dominiques. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But anyway. So, yeah, back to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the Abrahamic religion, so you're know, talking Christianity, Islam, Judaism, the moon has significance. So, first in Christianity, 
book of Genesis, right? God created the moon on the fourth day of creation to govern the night and mark the seasons. In the New Testament, the moon is used to symbolize the end times and the return of Jesus. And we've talked about this before, but the lunar calendar is used to determine the date of Easter, which is celebrated on the first Sunday following the first full moon after the vernal equinox. It's a mouthful, but yeah, that's how they calculate Easter. Moving on to Islam. In Islam, the moon is a central part of the Islamic calendar, which is based on the lunar cycle. The sighting of the new moon marks the beginning of each Islamic month. And the month of Ramadan, which we're actually currently in, is observed during the ninth lunar month. We just finished up with Easter, so. Yeah, I think there was like this convergence of like three different holidays. There was a Jewish holiday. It might have been Passover. Don't quote me on that, but they were like all happening like around the same time, like mm. in the same month. It was, it was something that was very unique about that happening. Interesting. In Islamic tradition, we back on Islam though. Mm-hmm. In Islamic tradition, <laughs> the moon is also used as a symbol of divine guidance and mercy. The crescent moon is often used as an emblem of Islam, and it is included on the flags of many Muslim countries. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and in Judaism, the moon is also used to determine the date of several holidays, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Passover. The Jewish calendar is based on a lunar cycle, and the new moon marks the beginning of each Hebrew month. So the moon is just all up in there, you know? All up in there. Also, so we mentioned the lunar calendar a couple of times and how these faiths incorporate the moon, which that's another thing that I feel like I was really late. Like, we don't learn about the lunar calendar growing up. Mm -mm. And so one of my best friends is Muslim and... It was like Ramadan was one year. And then the next year I was like, girl, that is not when it was last year. (laughs) And she was like, well, baby, it's because of the lunar calendar. And I was like, the home. And she was like, it moves. And I was like, why? (laughs) I had to do some research. It was very ignorant. Um, But yeah, that's not something that we grow up learning about at all. Yeah. Not in school, biology. I guess, I don't know. It wouldn't be biology. What would it be in? I I actually have no idea what it would be classified under because it's like not really science. It's more about like sociology. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) I'll tell you one thing. Texas. The state of Texas probably had to decide between Texas history and teaching us about the <laughs> god awful Alamo for the 13,000th time and teaching us about the lunar calendar. And now I know more about the Alamo. So, speaking of Texas, real quick, there was a TikTok video where this chick was realizing that no other states do a pledge to the state like we do. Oh boy. <laughs> that also took up time. When were we going to learn about the lunar calendar? We was pledging allegiance to the state of Texas, one and indivisible, right? I pledge allegiance to the Texas flag. Oh, I don't. I forgot it. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one and indivisible. That is how it went. One and indivisible. We're part of the United States of America. <laughs> this is goofy. All right. So, to your point, though, <laughs> we were not learning about the lunar calendar. We were learning about the Gregorian calendar, which is what we follow, and that follows a solar calendar right it's based on how long the earth takes to revolve around the sun the lunar calendar on the other hand is based on the 12 cycles of the moon with each cycle taking 29 or 30 days so that's how you get off right like if it's 29 or 30 days in the lunar months and we got 30 or 31 mm-hmm. in the gregorian side like yeah we, we we getting off so the lunar calendar is actually shorter than the solar calendar so a leap month is added every two or three years Gregorian calendar. I don't even know if they told me that it was Gregorian. I don't even know anybody named Greg, but I digress. Each lunar month begins with the new moon and the full moon happens about midway through the month, which I think if you were just kind of like putting it together, that might be a little counterintuitive. Like you're like, oh, the full moon's over. It's a new moon. So not quite. And we're going to get all into how that all works in Mm -hmm. the show. But there's all this stuff in spirituality about working with the moon. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember, I think it was Melanie, our fave that we probably talk about on every single episode. She (laughs) is a a medium and a clairvoyant that we've worked with in the past. 
But in one of my readings with her, she's like, you need to follow the moon cycles and work with the moon. And I didn't ask enough questions. I was just like, "Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, okay, girl. And I didn't know what she was talking about. I was like, work with the moon? How how do I work with the moon? It didn't make any sense. (laughs) But eventually, I was able to understand it. If you kind of take a step back, though, and think about the moon from like a science standpoint, we know that the moon, you know, it's exerting a lot of gravitational pull on the earth. You know, the moon controls the tides in the oceans, right? High tide, low tide, water levels are changing Mm -hmm. due to the moon. And we also know that the human body is like 70% water. So just kind of, you know, putting two and two together, intuitively, it makes sense that the moon's energy would have a significant effect on us, depending Mm -hmm. on what the moon is doing, right? Yeah. Also, women's menstrual cycles used to sync with the moon, hence why the moon is often connected to fertility. And this was in, you know, not modern civilization times, (laughs) where they talk about women's menstrual cycles syncing, the average length of a women's menstrual cycle. And when I say this, for the fellows that are listening, we're not talking about the actual like bleeding part, the whole rooter to the tutor, the whole cycle Mm -hmm. tends to be around 29 and a half days, which matches the waxing and waning phases of the moon. And there was a recent study in 2021 that found that some women's cycles are still influenced by lunar light. That's by how bright the moon is and gravity cycles, not all the time, but at certain times of their lives. Mm. Okay. Um, there's also growing. There's also that. There's also a growing body of evidence that the moon has an impact on human biology. People tend to sleep longer around a new moon and shorter around a full moon. Right, new moon, less light coming from the moon. Full moon, lots of light. And in one study, people with bipolar disorder had their manic depressive cycles oscillate with the moon's gravitational cycles. Some of these studies also noted that if they saw more of an effect in rural areas, it was due to moon brightness, the, you know, what Mick's saying, full moon, because of lack of city lights. Like there wasn't really other light sources that could be a variable there. If it didn't matter where you were and they were seeing these effects, no matter if you lived in the city or if you lived in the middle of nowhere, gravitational pull was the culprit or mm. the 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 reason. So now that you know the moon is doing a little something, something, like scientifically we know this. Mm-hmm. Let's get back to the spiritual side of things. Each phase of the moon has a different energy. So what are the phases and how can we work with them? So I think what's interesting though is that we do this kind of dichotomy of science versus spiritual. And I think in reality, they're really different ways of talking about the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. I find it to, I find it to be helpful because I think the science sometimes helps ground the spiritual. It helps mm-hmm. ground people in the spiritual, rather. For sure. That I'm going by faith, but there are real studies that are showing that no, this is this is not real, but like this is tangible. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's jump into the cycles, starting first with the new moon. This is the start of the lunar cycle. It represents new beginnings, represents growth and fresh starts. So this is like a great time to set intentions. Think about it like planting seeds for anything you want. It could be a new project. It could be a relationship, a new business venture. Uh, During the new moon, it is essential to focus on what you want to achieve and visualize it. Some things I like to do during a new moon. So I like to spend some time outdoors. I like to meditate specifically about projects I want to start and, you know, new things that may want to add into my routine. Mm. Waxing crescent. That's the second phase of the moon. In this phase, the moon is moving away from the shadow of the sun and it represents growth, manifestation, and attraction. This phase is a time to focus on the actions you need to take to aid the intentions that you set with the new moon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is like a little sliver 
of of light kind of popping out on like the right side of the moon if you're looking at it to me it kind of looks like an exponential growth curve because i'm a math nerd oh okay for my non-math nerds though basically it's like a backward c and so i think about this time period as like an accelerator for my plans mm. it's like when i'm writing down I'm, I'm thinking about you know when i'm journaling during this this moon phase i'm thinking about what do i want to like kick into overdrive mm. you know try to limit it to like one or two things because there's only so much i can handle at once but yeah. yeah all right moving on to the first quarter the first quarter phase is the third phase of the moon it represents challenges, action, and decision-making. This phase is an excellent time to take action on your intentions and make decisions that will propel you forward. Hmm. Waxing gibbous. That's the fourth phase of the moon, and it represents refinement and growth and progress. And like, think of what we're doing so far. We're making plans, we're setting intentions, we're accelerating, and then we're refining. Mm-hmm. This phase is an excellent time to refine your goals and intentions and make any necessary adjustments. Yeah, this is like you're past the halfway point in terms of like light being seen in the sky on the moon. So you're like about to hit that peak of energy that comes with the full moon. So this is like, again, that refinement that Jim was talking about. So that brings us to the fifth phase, which is the full moon. It represents completion, manifestation, and fruition. This is the time to celebrate your achievements and accomplishments and release things that no longer serve you. Great time for a little fire ceremony if you want to burn on a piece of paper, things you want to release. Full Moon's great for that. I'd also recommend doing some gratitude journaling. If you're not like practicing gratitude journaling regularly, like every day, maybe you only want to do it once a month, this is the time to do it during during the full moon. So. Mm. Waning gibbous. You gave me all the gibbouses. Mm-hmm. The, waning, <laughs> the waning gibbous phase is the sixth phase of the moon, and it represents gratitude and forgiveness. Remember, you just released a bunch of things. You saw things come into fruition. So this phase is an excellent time to let go of any grudges or negative emotions and focus on gratitude which is a big part of manifestation work. Being grateful for what you already have can really help change your vibration to bring in the things that you that you desire. Moving on to the third quarter, and this is the seventh phase of the moon. It's about reflection and release and, you know, any more letting go. Maybe you held on to some things that you didn't let go during the full moon. This is another time where you could Reflect on some of your achievements and let go of anything that's still lingering. Next up, waning crescent. That's the final phase of the moon, and it represents rest, reflection, and preparation. This phase is an excellent time to rest and recharge your energy before the next lunar cycle begins. So you're resting before you set your new intentions for the next cycle. Mm -hmm. So I think that sums up the moon phases and how we can work with them spiritually. A few tips in terms of how you can keep track of the different phases. There is a Gmail calendar that's specifically for moon cycles, and you can add it to your personal calendar and it'll kind of like show up like almost like holidays on your on your Google calendar there. If you want to go more in depth, though, I would recommend getting an app like Pattern or Moon X. I actually have both of them. I think Pattern does a good job interpreting the moon phase with your astrology, kind of like giving you personalized recommendations. Moon X is really precise about the timing of each moon phase. So they'll tell you like, this is the percentage of light that's like hitting the moon right now. This is the exact time when the full moon will be in your area. Those kind of things. And they actually have some great moon affirmations and they even provide insights about each day of the moon cycle. So they'll say like, oh, this is the fifth day in the moon cycle uh, out of 29 or 30 or whatever it is that month. And it's great for X, Y, Z. So I like having them both and being able to kind of jump and see what both have to offer. Yeah, this, I feel like this episode was just intro one-on-one to moon phases because we didn't even touch on the full moons in Gemini and like, mm-hmm. what does that mean? And so 
there's a whole, when you brought a pattern, there's a whole astrological layer on top of that, that maybe we'll jump into Mm -hmm. one of these days. A couple other things, some period trackers, mine does, keeps track of the lunar cycles. Now, caveat, be careful with period trackers and them keeping track of your data, et cetera, et cetera. I'm a married mother of two, so, I mean, it's quite boring, but just disclaimer on that. But they do keep track of the lunar cycles, and if you are consistent about keeping track of your period on those, it can be interesting to see where you might sync up and fall out of sync and then come back again with the lunar cycle. So that's kind of cool. And this assumes that you're not on hormonal birth control, of course. Human design reflectors, remember that your decision-making depends on the lunar cycle. So you should have been tracking lunar cycles like yesterday, but that's okay. So you can start now. Um, (laughs) But for everyone else, Incorporate the lunar phases with your journaling, feeling more tired than normal, because for me, the full moon can knock me out. And so you might start seeing a pattern that this tends to happen around certain times of the lunar cycle, or you might feel more emotional around, I don't know, the waning gibbous. I don't know. But, you know, it might just be something interesting to look into. So, yeah. Moon phases. <laughs> yeah, I think that's definitely a good call, Jen. It's more of a 101 on the on the lunar phases. We'll have something in the future, I'm sure. So we're going to get out of here. But before we go, we do want to remind you to check out our merch store. Jen highlighted the sticker that she loves. I'm a big hoodie guy, and I specifically sourced this hoodie because of how comfortable it is. So very high quality. Highly recommend it. And finally, if you're loving the show, go outside, look at the moon, but also subscribe and give us five stars wherever you listen. Namaste. Namaste.